Hey, what's up guys? This is Feeds again, back with another video. Uh, I got a couple questions on setting up BlueStacks and how to run multiple instances of Raid uh, on BlueStacks and, and a variety of different stuff. Um, I don't have a Nox tutorial yet uh, up because I don't normally use it that often. Uh, I will do something in the future with it. I don't know when that video will be coming. So this will be specifically for BlueStacks. Uh, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment at the end of the video. Uh, or down below and let me know. Uh, so we'll kind of jump right into it. So the first thing you need to do is know that when setting up BlueStacks originally, if you're having problems, there's a couple things that could be going on with it. Uh, I tried probably every troubleshoot I could find on YouTube before I actually found the one that worked for me. Uh, <clears throat> just so you know, BlueStacks is a very, it performs well for what it's supposed to do. Uh, but depending upon your certain system requirements, can determine kind of how it goes or what goes on with it. So uh, I just wanted to show you real quick that it is possible to run multiple instances of RAID and not really have a ton of performance issues that comes with it. Uh, as, you, as you run more instances, obviously you'll need to tone down the settings when it comes to it. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, but ultimately, you're not restricted to or confined by how many you can have open to it. It's just based on how how your system operates and controls from that point. So just showing you um, the load times do take a little bit longer because I haven't set on lower settings uh, just to show you different frame rate options. Um, just so you know, when I when I run blue sacks by itself with one account, I'll always run at the highest possible settings. Um, which will always be my system default that I have it set to. 240 DPI, I don't need to set it up for any more um, for doing this game. I have two CP, CPU core set, memory, uh, maximizes all the way out, and then frame rate up to 60 rates. And then of course, I have it optimized within the game itself um, at the, the highest settings I can have for it. So just so you can see, I have a 30 frames right here, um, but just to show you 60 frames, ultra, no problems when it comes to it. And then of course, the sound effects and stuff turned off. So um, just to give you an idea, this is what it looks like as I move it around at 60 frames. And then this is what it looks like when you're moving at 30 frames. So not a super significant difference. Obviously you can see a little chop it's at 30, but the chop doesn't really affect your ability to do it for input lag or anything like that. So um, not a significant difference when it comes to it. Obviously it looks a little crisper at 60. So if you are just looking at one clip, you can see that it looks a lot better. Not, as, not really any chop that comes with it. Um, but for the most part, almost instantaneous response. Now the other thing too, um, when you do your your uh, blue stack settings, you need to know that the settings will play a factor in, in your performance 110% um, when it comes to these things. And it, this is anything from frames to DPI to, to it all. If your system isn't designed to operate with certain settings, obviously you're gonna have some issues that come with it. So as you can see, we're in different frames. It's a little bit slower on this one right here because um, I have it set something a little bit less optimized just to show you what it looks like uh, versus something that still runs perfectly fine. So this is just one of the accounts that I operate off of. Show you the settings. I run a high 60 frames per second. Uh, and this is technically on the third instance. And then on this one, just, oh look, we got a reward. Oh, dang it, we missed what it was. And then on this one, you'll see takes us just a, just a hair because all the stupid pop-ups 30 low and then of course on this one down here you'll see high 30 frames per second so um, frame FPS doesn't matter too much on one but as you run multiple instances uh, to avoid any potential hiccups you could run potentially into it uh, it is better to set a little little lower frames and not <clears throat> ultra settings if you want to my rig is a, I run with the 1070 so I don't really have any issues if I run them on an ultra uh, but like I said, I want to show you a couple different settings that come into it. So we'll, we'll kind of jump right into it. Uh, I'll show you how you do it as far as running multiple instances. Um, there are going to be a few assumptions made in this video that you are familiar with BlueStacks, at least on how to install it and run it. 
Um, and this will be kind of an addressing some of the potential issues you can have in trying to get it run while getting the error message. Now, this is BlueStacks 4 uh, for anyone out there that's curious. So the first thing that we're going to touch on is we'll look at the BlueStacks Multi Instance Manager. You can actually download this from BlueStacks itself. Um, this is how you set up all your instances that come into it. So as you can see, they're all, it says that they're all running. Um, for one more text, have you guys, this is just like a, basically a virtual machine within your computer. Um, so you have to kind of treat it like that when it comes into it. So you can batch them out, you can arrange, you can do settings. We're not going to go over every specific option or feature on the BlueStacks instance, multi instance manager. We're just going to simply talk about what it takes to do it. So whenever you get to this point to where you have BlueStacks set up for one time and you understand kind of settings, whenever you launch a new instance, it'll always launch your original edition of BlueStacks, which is this one right here. This is my default BlueStacks that I always run with whenever I open up, whether I play with multiple, multiple accounts or one. Um, the other thing that you're going to notice too is that you see numbers by it. So BlueStacks 1, BlueStacks 2, BlueStacks 3. Now this is for streamers out there. When you guys set up multiple instances to show, if you don't do where display capture does all of this stuff right here, which shows you everything, and you decide to do individual windows, try and remember, or try not to adjust the sizings of your frames or your windows and blue stacks, because when you try and reload back to those screens on your, your image capture for your OBS, um, it will resize the window itself. So if you do a smaller, it'll look smaller, which can jack up your settings. Um, I know for people who run with, um, certain overlays and things like that have, have those problems. So just be conscious of that stuff. Obviously, it can be kind of a nuisance if you have to always change it. For me, I try to be really conscious of it. I had to adjust a couple of the windows to do this video to show you some of the, the stuff going on with it. Um, so I'm going to have to change the settings back in OBS at a later date when it comes to it. So when it comes into it, whenever you want to launch a new instance of uh, BlueStacks, it's going to treat it like a whole brand new machine. You can either do a clone instance where it would basically make a copy of the settings you already have or a fresh instance. Uh, cloning is not a problem. Uh, the problem with cloning that I have, if I ever run multiple accounts, if I do a new fresh run account, what I always call them, uh, where I make a new account to like do a speed run through, I have to log in and log out again. And the reason why I did these instances originally was to avoid having to log in and log out every time I wanted to get into one of my alt accounts or something like that. So just to give you an idea, I always go with fresh instance because it's the cleanest way too, because none of the presets are there. So I can determine what size I want it. I can determine system default, DPI. I can determine how it runs, OpenGL, DirectX. Um, use advanced graphics, how many cores I want to use, how many, how, how much frames I want to operate off of, and of course the type of memory usage I want on it. So that's a huge role that kind of goes into it. You can always adjust those settings right there by clicking on the cogwheel. If you ever want to remove the item, you can just go ahead and click remove and it's, it gets rid of that instance altogether. So when you go into new instance, you can also do a variety of different things where you create a desktop shortcut. So instead of going into the multi instance tool, if you don't want to, you can go ahead and make shortcuts for every single one of these that you, you can. And then what it'll allow you to do is basically click that executable from your desktop and you can open all those up at the same time, which makes it super convenient. However, I don't need all that desktop space and I, I just launch everything from my instance manager because I remember which accounts are saved to which. Now the good thing too is you can always edit the names of these accounts. So if you wanted to, I could always list this as BlueStacks Primary uh, or something like that and just simply hit click off and it'll save that name for it. So then you know exactly what you got going on there. And of course you're not limited. You can always select multiple instances to do closing out, to do whatever, to batch them. However you want to do them, select all for that option when it comes to. So really simple for the most part. Um, the multi, the multi instance manager is really good because it allows a lot of functionality to it. Uh, and of course there's no degree in how you can adjust things when it comes to it. So you can manually, so let's say if I want to make my boost X2, if I wanted to change how the keyboard layout is, I could do that. Um, so that way I can multi, I can operate off of different ones when it comes to that stuff and not have any issues. So as you can see pretty quick load times in for all of the games. Um, as far as selecting stuff, I'm going to show you, uh, kind of the, the side by side combat, just so you can get an idea. Uh, of what it looks like so we'll just do an easy one and we'll get all queued up there the only the only time consuming part that uh you'll run into is that when you open more instances you're gonna have more clicking to do and unless you're a fast clicker or if you happen to have uh just a setup that allows you to be a very fast or efficient clicker you run into some spots where you, you you get stuck sometimes when it comes to that stuff so we'll just go campaign we're gonna run it side by side so gonna run it side by side and the good thing too is with auto battle setups and stuff like that, this makes it really convenient. So we're just gonna battle this boss. So we'll start. We'll start. We'll start and we'll start. 
So this is just showing you different stuff. Let me minimize my clip a little bit so you can see it there. Just to give you guys an idea of what you're looking at. Um, as you can see, my lowest optimized one takes my longest to load in. Nothing wrong with that when it comes to it. But different ideas, as you can see, this one on the on the top right is working the best when it comes to that uh, in regards to those things. And then of course, the choppiest one down here still runs, obviously running slower frames. It's the lower settings. Uh, it's designed to run on less cores too, so you can get an idea. So I started them effectively all at the same time. Uh, I finished one, finished the second, finishing the third, and then of course this one's still on round one um, to give you an idea. So obviously this plays a factor in it too. When you're doing these teams uh, in regards to speed and things of that nature, if you're trying to do the most efficient runs, obviously having higher settings will allow you to run more efficiently. What that means is that if you're doing 16 to 18 second clears on tier three or 12-3, um, you'd want to run with the higher settings. Now, if you're just trying to run a lot of instances and do the auto battles and stuff like that, obviously you can run the lower settings because time efficiency isn't necessarily the best thing you gotta do with it. And then of course, when you've got instances like this, where it runs just a little bit slower. I like to run one slower instance because what it allows me to do is I can stagger them a little bit. Uh, and what that means is that as I start up the other ones, the other one's still going or getting ready to finish so I can kind of repeat it so I'm not wasting time when it comes to that stuff. Um, this is a degree in being efficient in RAID per se, but just generally when you're using mobile games or doing mobile games like this in multi-instance layers with blue stacks, um, it's, it makes it a little bit more efficient overall because if you can kind of plan out your, or time out a little bit better with what you're expecting on that stuff to it. So. Just to give you an idea too, you're not obligated to change your settings in here. And as you can see, you can't change your settings once the instance has been launched from here. So you have to individually go in and change the settings that you want for it. Um, just know it's always gonna go off the default settings. And then of course you can always turn on streaming mode, which allows you to give you a little extra functionality inside BlueStacks as well when it comes to it. And then of course your notifications. The one cool thing about running multi instances of BlueStacks is it'll have most of your, your, your Google information saved into it if you load it in. Um, but what it means is you can also set up different emails as well. So if you're making these accounts, you're not obligated to that stuff as well. So this is a really short video, guys, on how to use BlueStacks multi-instance uh, mixer um, or manager, excuse me, and gives you a lot of opportunity and understanding of how it works. Uh, like I said, there's no limitation, or I've never haven't found a limitation yet on, on what you can do with BlueStacks. Um, if I wanted to get crazy, I could probably open up eight more instances. Uh, I don't have that many accounts to begin with for RAID specifically, but if I wanna try different things, I could definitely do that as well. Um, so again, guys, if you guys enjoyed this video uh, or have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment below. If you liked it enough, go ahead and hit the like button. If you like me enough, go ahead and the follow the subscribe button above and uh, just let me know what I can do in the future. If you guys have any questions specifically about blue sex, about RAID or anything in general, I'll answer as many questions as I, as I possibly can uh, to help you guys out. So that'll be it for me, guys. Again, this is Fees, your boy. Go ahead and uh, hit the follow button. Yeah, thank you. Run, it's gonna be a left click. It's gonna be a left click.